In this segment, we'll show you how to cable the V-Track A-Class. Let's take a quick look at the back of the unit. Offering no single point of failure, the following units are replaceable and can be swapped out of the V-Track A-Class with zero downtime. Power supply, controller, and battery backup unit. Now let's cover the cabling, starting with the UPS port. Here is the micro to DB9 cable used to connect the UPS. This is a custom cable available from Promise as an accessory. Next is the Ethernet management port. This connection is used for metadata traffic for out-of-band management, allowing you to manage the VTRAC A-Class and SAN file system via the GUI or CLI. This is a standard RJ45 cable, and we recommend CAT5 or above. Next to the Ethernet management port, we have the RS-232 to DB9 connection. This connection can be used for serial debugging purposes through our internal CLI, but is seldom used since the VTRAC A-Class is serviceable from the GUI and CLI using out-of-band management. One thing to note is that if your host computer does not have a DB9 serial connection, you can use a USB to DB9 adapter. Next are the dual USB ports. These USB ports can be used to upload or download information from the unit using a thumb drive. Please visit our website for a list of compatible thumb drives. The USB port allows firmware upgrades and allows a user to download the VTRAC A-Class subsystem service report for troubleshooting purposes. Next are the 8 gigabit fiber channel ports. These come unpopulated but can be purchased as accessories. A number of compatible alternatives are offered by Promise. Please visit our website for a list. To establish the fiber channel port connections, we will be using multi-mode fiber optic cables that require SFP transceivers. The multi-mode fiber optic cables are inserted into the SFPs that were placed into the unit in our previous step. Last, we have the 6 gigabit SAS expansion port. This connection is used to connect the JBOT expansion to the VTRAC A-Class RAID head. These cables are provided with the purchase of a JBOT. All that's left is your power cable. If you have a dual controller SKU, repeat the same cabling procedure to connect the second controller, then you're done. You can now fire the systems up. JBOD first, then the VTRAC A-Class. Allow four to five minutes for the unit to boot. There are LED indicators on the front and the back of the VTRAC A-Class that provide the current status. When the heartbeat LED is green, we're ready to manage the VTRAC A-Class via its web management interface. Your system hardware and cabling is now complete. In our next video, we'll cover initial software setup between the VTRAC A-Class and a client.